Hello and welcome to this One Thing, a daily video devotional coming to you from First Presbyterian Church of Fort Lauderdale. And together we'll be looking at one text and choosing one thing for you to consider. And, and we hope that you find this a thought-provoking, encouraging part of your day. Are we there yet? Four words that, that every child on a trip has asked countless times. And the question that every parent, adult, trip chaperone has answered again and again and again. But, but what is really in that question? It's, it's the idea that, that we're going somewhere, right? And, and that when we, when we finally arrive at that somewhere, that it will be of some significance, that, that something, something will begin. That something is going to happen, that there, there will be a, a vacation beginning there, a, a holiday meal, there's, there's a wedding or a celebration of some kind. There is, there is something of anticipation at the other end of, are we there yet? A question that is sure to be asked in cars all across America this summer. In today's passage from the Gospel of Matthew, there is this famous story about a conversation between Jesus and a person that's often referred to as the rich young ruler. And, and this rich young man, he comes to Jesus and he asks Jesus how he can obtain eternal life. And Jesus responds by saying to, to follow the commandments. And the man says, I, I do. And so Jesus says, go and sell all your possessions and follow me. And, and we read that, that the man goes away sad because he had great wealth. He is presumably unwilling to, to part with his stuff. Now, now, most commentators agree that Jesus is speaking with particularity to, to this man. That is, he's telling him what he specifically needs to hear. Not, not that we all need to sell our possessions, but, but rather that this man's stuff is what is preventing him from serving God and, and from serving neighbor in a complete and comprehensive way. And so the story, it, it begs us to ask ourselves, what is it that Jesus would say to each of us what are those things, those, those habits, those patterns of behavior which are preventing us from serving God and the community around us the way that we were created to serve? But Jesus does something else here in the story. In, in Matthew 19 here, he, he makes this subtle correction of the man's question. In, in verse 16, we read that the man says to Jesus, Teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? Another translation says, What must I do to get eternal life? And, and Jesus does this thing in his reply. In verse 17, he says, If you want to enter life, Keep the commandments from getting life, from having life, to entering life. Now remember, this man's understanding of the world is it's shaped by what he can get, by what he can possess, by what he can have. Scholar Dale Bruner writes that, that here in verse 17, Jesus transfers the man from the market to the road. Jesus tells him to see the way to eternal life as a journey, not as something to be obtained. And what we see is that salvation and that the restoration of all that is broken in this world is, is not something for us to have and to possess, but rather a journey for us to participate in. It's a road that we are 
all traveling on. And that we have the opportunity to occasionally check in with one another to look at each other and to ask those four words, are we there yet? You know, as 2020 continues to unfold, the pandemic, economic insecurity, racial inequality, we know the answer is no. We are not there yet. We are not there yet. But the one thing is that we are on the way there because God is pulling us there. You know, and sometimes along the way, we, we are helping the journey. And, and sometimes, sometimes we are not. And this is Christ's challenge to the rich young ruler is to, to, to separate himself from those things which are holding him back so that he can join in with the journey, so that he can join in with the work being done. What is God calling you to put down so that you can join in full service to the journey. Friends, we are on the road. And one day, together, because of what God has done in Jesus Christ, we will arrive. Friends, be safe. Be well. And we'll see you tomorrow.